Okay, if it works for you guys, I'm just gonna start on day one. I'm not gonna read the intro, you can buy the book. It's not expensive, it's on Amazon. Anyway, um, I was doing a live video the other day about remez, which is a term that is used um, in hermeneutics studying scripture. And that is what I start day one with, is some study on remez, because the, book, the title, I Desire Mercy, Not Sacrifice, is a Remez uh, statement. It's a quote um, in Matthew 9, 11 through 13. The Pharisees asked Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners and blah, blah, blah. And Jesus answered, it's not the healthy that need a doctor. I came to save the lost. Learn what this means. Um, and really, the lost part isn't in there. I'm just trying not to look at the book the whole time. Um, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call the right, not call to come call the righteous, but sinners. So, as Jesus says that, I feel like should I just read the book? <laughs> you can buy the book for reading the book. I don't know how going through this is different than you getting the book. Um. And now delete, 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 whatever. Okay, so Jesus often quoted bits of scripture to the Pharisees because he knew they understood their scriptures and they could easily find the context of his quote. Um, in rabbinical teaching, this alluding to other scriptures that is common in the Bible is known as remez, meaning hint in Hebrew. If you have a cross-reference Bible, you can find remez cross-references among those in the middle of your Bible, you know, a little section right there. Um... They're useful for studying. Duh. <laughs> when you write a book and you're like, yeah, did I make this for babies? But you don't know who's reading. Anyway. Okay. So when he, Jesus uses remez, like I mentioned in the video that I did on my walk the other day, when he's on the cross and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's not just saying that. He's saying, go back and read Psalm 22 for that specific reference. And this one, he's saying, go back and read Hosea 6. So that's what I do here in the book. And I don't go through the whole thing. But remember, he's talking to Pharisees. And this is what he says to them by saying, go back and look at Hosea. What, what can I do with you, Ephraim, which is the northern kingdom of Israel? What can I do with you, Judah, which is the southern kingdom? Your love is like the morning mist, and the early dew, it disappears. Uh, therefore, I cut you into pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. Then my judgments go forth like the sun. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and the acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. As at Adam, they have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me. Um, then it goes on. The Hosea part goes on. says what they did wrong. Um, and then in Hosea 7, 16, he kind of wraps up the thought. It said, I trained them and strengthened their arms, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Um, so we can see that really Jesus is like hardcore rebuking the Pharisees. That's what the whole thing, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, was about. It was a rebuke. Not to say that that specific line, but in talking to the Pharisees, he's saying, Rebuke, rebuke, um, blah, blah, blah. So when Hosea says, therefore I cut you into pieces with my prophets, I killed you with the words of my mouth, then judgments go forth like the sun. He's literally prophesying um, about that very moment in Matthew 9, um, Hosea is. So, um, and just in case the Pharisees listening wonder <laughs> if he has the right to judge him, they need only to recount the rest of Hosea 6 and 7. God strengthened their arms, raised them up, but they were a faulty bow, missing the mark where they were aimed at. Um, so even though they met all of the sacrificial requirements, um, they didn't acknowledge God with their hearts. Their love was like the morning mist that disappeared, and they had broken covenant. So there's a lot, and so then we dig in in the book a little bit. Um, so law of first mention is mentioned down here. I try to give um, a few things like Remez, Law First Mention. Um, there's some more in the book. We'll get to it. So um, the Law First Mention, you kind of look up a, a word and see when it's first used or a phrase. See when it's first used. I feel like I'm not centered. 
But oh, no, not really. <laughs> I can only sit up so high on my feet on the couch. Um, anyway, so Faulty Bow was the one that kind of jumped at, out to me. And it is Strong's word number 718 or 85, which is Quisheth. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that one right. Um, so it's used as a bow, first mentioned as a rainbow in Genesis 9.13. I have placed my bow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of covenant between me and the earth. So as an archery term, because I also thought, well, this is specifically an archery term. I should probably find the first time it's used as an archery term. It's used in Genesis 27, uh, verse 3. And that's when Isaac is telling Esau, take your hunting gear, your quiver and bow, and go out to the field and hunt some game for me. Um, setting the stage for when Esau would get his blessing as the firstborn, right? So, um, without trying to read too much into this, um, but also giving adequate weight to the law of first mention, both of these have to do with covenants. And Hosea, part of the rebuke was that they broke covenant. So we can already start to make a tie in here. So the bow um, is meant to shoot arrows to hit the target. And sin, I'm sure you've heard, if you go to church at all, has been um, labeled um, biblically as defining, or defined biblically as missing the mark. Um, so we can safely deduce that Jesus was telling the Pharisees, look, you're trained in scriptures, you raised up to be an example for others, but instead of showing my love, you just find fault, condemn, grow colder, you're missing the mark, dudes. Okay, God looks at the heart, we know from Samuel 16, 7, famous little scripture there, um, and the covenant circumstances, which is a very physical thing, God is concerned about our heart, not actual circumstances. I said, what did I say? The covenant of... Whatever I said, let's go back and read it again. I didn't say circumcision, did I? Circum whatever I said. Okay, in the covenant of circumcision, a very physical thing, God is concerned about our heart, not actual circumcision. Romans 2, 29, a person is a Jew out inwardly, and circumcision is a circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. So... Pharisees kept the laws of God, but their hearts were far from him. Um, add to the list, 1 Corinthians 13, blah, 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 that if I keep all my laws but have not love, I'm nothing. So, again, rebuke, rebuke, rebuke for all the Pharisees. That's all he ever has for them. Maybe. No, there was one dude that was a Pharisee. Well, whatever. Mostly rebuke. And we, mm, that's a soapbox. Never mind. I won't go there. <laughs> anyway, I was just going to say something about... Uh, most of the time we rebuke sinners and people who are outside of the church and really all of Jesus rebukes were inside the church and usually leadership just saying um, blah 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 so I desire mercy not sacrifice and I'm gonna skip this little questiony section because I don't have time and you're not going to answer me. Um, so we're going to put it into practice. Um, oh, I do a little thingy about finding a remez thing of your own and doing the first mention stuff and things like that. Oh, and that's how I end that day. I guess I should have read this like before I started. So basically, da da da, there's that little bit. And there's that little bit. And as you can see, these days are short. It's not a hard study. <laughs> ah, I dropped the book. Okay, so number one, go get my book, come on. People, I'm a, I'm a decent writer and I got a lot of cool, good stuff. So my assignment, which is in the book and which is for you today, because I will come back maybe tomorrow and do the next page I really don't know there's only four days a week on these guys and so it'd be simple to just come back and read it just like this y'all can let me know what you want to do um, but the assignment for this day is to go and do a remez thing of your own um, I mentioned uh, Jesus's words on the cross as a good one that leads you back to Psalms 22 and tell you all kinds of stuff but pretty much just go anywhere you see quotes in the New Testament and say, okay, this is probably quoting the Old Testament. Let me go back and check out where it's at. 
um, it's a really cool thing to do. Sometimes I think I'm going to write a whole study on just the hints of go back and read, you know, this and what did he actually mean? Because so many people let's take this little section and they're like, oh, I got to figure out the meaning right there in this little section. And that's not at all what God is doing. He's saying, go back and read the whole thing. So, um, have fun. It is fun. It's not a chore. Bible study is awesome. The thing, um, people who think that Bible study is not awesome, by the way, um, you got to turn on your ears and your eyeballs because pretty much all the time, every time I do Bible study, I can't think off the top of my head when it hasn't happened. If I'm looking, he will jump out at something, you know, like it'll leap off the page and I'll go, oh, this is what you want me to look at. Like he's not saying read the whole Bible in a year, read this many things. And that's how you're good at Bible study. When you're good, I don't even know if that should be a thing. When you're good at Bible study, it is because you take the things that God pulls out for you and you research them further. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of kings to search it out. And yes, we are kings. So um, have fun with that. Buy the book and then you can follow along as I go through these. And of course, you do not have to watch them the day I put them out. So you can wait and binge, whatever that would be for Bible study. I guess I have binge some days. Okay, I've said enough. Goodbye.